Susan Nucci was the ultimate daytime diva as Erica Kane on All My Children. But off camera, no one knew... No one knew the behind-the-scenes drama her family has faced for the past seven years. Take a look. Susan Lucci has captivated television audiences for more than 45 years, from daytime with All My Children to primetime with Devious Maids. In 2008, even joining the cast of Dancing with the Stars. But behind the scenes, she was dealing with a very private pain. Her grandson, born nine weeks premature, was fighting for his young life. After each dance performance, Susan would travel to be by the side of her daughter, Liza, as they struggled to keep baby Brendan alive. He pulled through, but then faced another health struggle at age two, when he was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. Now, five years later, Susan and her daughter are speaking out to give hope to others, proving there is no end to this star's bright light. Please welcome Susan Lucia and her daughter, Liza Huber. that you have done it and <laughs> why you tear up because I know what your fans mean to you and that's why sharing this story is equally uh, as important because it's something that you feel people need to know and something that you kept quiet for a long time Liza your son Brendan um, was born nine weeks premature he's doing great now everybody <laughs> Seven years old. but at the time you were alone it was the middle of the summer your husband was off in europe because you, no one was expecting the baby to come when he did so what was that night like for you it was um one of those those things where you're really kind of hovering over your yeah. body saying is this really happening i was i was by myself um it was a saturday in august and no one was around my husband was in london my parents were um, a few hours away and uh it just um it was scary but as women i mean we are we're amazing, and we can get through anything. I mean, if, if someone would have told me years ago, you're going to have, you know, the baby really early by yourself in the hospital, your husband won't be there, and, oh, I, I don't know if I can do that. But we can, and we do it. Yeah. And my mom was able to um, to get home uh, just as I was going to start pushing, so it was... Uh, I, I wasn't by myself, so... <laughs> no, yeah. I'm just so happy to be there. Just to support you, daughter, but... Four days later, you had to go to L.A. to start shooting Dancing with the Stars. Exactly. Of all things. So how hard was it to, you keep, to keep up that sort of happy public persona and know what was going on back east? Well, I knew that Brendan was born nine weeks early. But because I was there when he was born, too, he was born, he let out this great big strong cry, and I knew he was strong. And also, for a preemie, he was a good weight. He was under five pounds, but not by much. And so I thought, this baby has a good chance. I also had had experience in that hospital, in NICU, and I knew how great they, they were. Yeah. So, and I thought, uh, you know, I, I know that this baby's in good hands. And we had no hint that, um, you know, of what was to come. Yeah. Uh, only that when I would go home and go to the hospital with Liza, and then, then Brendan had some issues about survival. It, it was a week after he was born that we almost lost him. I had this, I, I was at home, and I used to go to the hospital um, when my oldest would nap, and then at nighttime, but something just, it, it drew me. Something told me, go to the hospital yeah, now, and, I, and I, I just went, I said to my husband, I have to go, and um, when I got there, and I parked, something said, run. And I, so I just, I ran through the hospital into the NICU and the nurse said, oh, I'm so happy you're here. He stopped breathing. Yeah. He's not breathing. And they took him out of the, the incubator and he was just turning gray and they would manually stimulate and, him. And he, he did recover from that and then went on month after month seeming to be okay, although there were, there were signs of something you weren't sure of what. I didn't realize that one in 300 children in the U.S. have cerebral palsy. I did yes. not know that it's a disorder caused by damage to the brain during pregnancy or birth. My nephew is also... A child who has cerebral palsy, yeah. And he's doing great. He's 27 years old oh, now. But when did you first realize eh, something is not right? Something's wrong here. You know, I, I, I mean, the first few months, it was about he was alive. Just we were just yeah, so sure. happy he was alive. And I remember now, you know, as I look back on it, when we left the hospital, there, there are physical therapists there, and she said his body feels a little tight, um, but I think he's going to be okay. And I mean, you know, no, he's alive, so anything else, it doesn't matter. But yeah. then... Um, 
as time went on and he was 10 months old and he couldn't sit up on his own, I mean, I admit I went into a bit of denial. Um, and I then, think that happens with so many parents. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just was so happy he was alive and otherwise healthy. But then at 19 months and he couldn't stand up, there was just, I had to kind of slap myself yeah. out of it. And we really went to some specialists and that's when he was diagnosed. And I know you've been very protective of your, of your son, of your family, and had not wanted to talk about this in the past because you didn't want him to find as just somebody with cerebral palsy, exactly. obviously. But now you've chosen to speak out. Both of you are very involved with UCP of New York City. Why now, Liza? It's a great question. You know, it, it really is a journey. And as a mother, that is your first instinct to want to protect your child. And I've been wanting to talk about it for a long time, but I didn't know when would the time be right or, or really even if I should. But as he got older, you know, I really wanted to become active in the cerebral palsy community and use this wonderful platform that we have to help increase awareness and really help shine a light on the many different faces of cerebral and palsy. And to let people know they're not alone, right? There's exactly. Just, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Much a part of this. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And the cerebral palsy community is amazing. They're living, they're thriving, they're working, they're going to school, they have families. It's, it's, um, we really just want to shine a light on how many different faces of CP. Well, we, we so appreciate you being here. Um, you're, you're an amazing mom. You both are. And thank you. And I'm so glad Brenda's doing well and thriving. That's he the is. best news thank of all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Head to our website for more information on United Cerebral Palsy of New York City.